Hello there, and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. I'm Ash, the curator of this channel, which aims to provide you with life skills, tips and advice that will help you on your journey to Chap Nirvana. Now, there are many occasions when a gentleman has to entertain guests at his a place of abode, and there follows the tricky question, what are you going to give them for food? Well, I have find myself in just that situation. Tonight, myself and my wife are hosting a house party for 15 guests, and we want to provide them with some good solid food. It's November in the UK, it's cold outside, and everybody wants some hearty fare in their bellies to keep them warm, as well as the plenty of liquid refreshment, of course, that we will be providing tonight. So, what are we gonna do? Well, we've decided to have a bit of a buffet. We've done it in the past, always seems to work well. It's quite effortless when you're a host to get everything pre-prepared, laid out, and then your guests can just help themselves and there's little requirement from you. You can just enjoy the evening chatting to your friends and seeing them enjoying the food that you've pre-prepared. No stress, no bother. So the preparation begins early in the morning. It's uh, just coming up to quarter past eight a.m on Saturday morning and I've got my main course here. So we've decided for our main buffet, we're gonna provide a cooked ham. Now, cooking a ham can be a bit hit and miss, particularly if you bake it. You don't always get the results that you hope for, but there's one surefire method to make sure that your meat is lovely and tender and just the way people like it. And that's slow cooking. Very easy and very cost effective on your time because it involves just 10 minutes to get it ready, put it on in the morning, you come back six, seven, eight hours later, and hey presto, your meal is ready. All you've got to do is fish it out and give it a good uh, preparation, cut it up, ready for your guests to enjoy. So on this occasion, I shall be cooking this gammon ham, which I purchased yesterday. It weighs about five and a quarter kilograms, or 11 and a half pounds, if you prefer to think in the, the imperial system. Uh, so it's quite a chunk, and it should easily accommodate the, the appetite of the 15 folks who are coming here tonight. Assuming nobody's a vegetarian, or if they are, all the better, more meat for the rest of us. So I'm gonna put my piece of gammon now into my slow cooker. To be honest, that's just about as difficult as this process gets. But just to go along with it, we need to give it some flavor and some, some, some added boost to uh, just to give it some taste. And not that it's not gonna be tasty enough as it is, but you know, we can add some little nuances to the flavor which will just make it pop and make people remember that you've gone the extra effort. Now for me, I think pork products go really well with apple. You know, we always have apple sauce when we have pork products at home at the dinner table. And on this occasion, I'm gonna add some cider. Nice and simple, made from apple, so kind of where I wanna go. We need to add some liquid to the meat just to allow it to simmer and slowly cook. So you need to put in, I'm gonna put in about half a can, or maybe a little more, it's a really big ham. I might put three quarters of a can in there just to make sure it's got that little bit of uh, liquid to work with as it's slow cooking. Now, because I like sweetness, and I think the apple coupled with a bit of sweetness will really add some additional you know, knockout flavor to this. I'm gonna add some maple syrup. Maple syrup, per, very personal favorite of mine, just adds that sort of smoky background flavor with a little bit of, with a little bit of uh, sweetness as well. So maple, one of my favorite flavors, particularly when mixing with meat, really does add something to it. And just to balance it off a bit, a little bit of pepper, just sprinkled over the top, there we go, a little bit of pepper, because sometimes, you know, you can't be too sweet. I'm not gonna add any salt to this, because obviously it's a cured meat, so it has been cured, uh, probably in salt, in some form of brine. Or it's certainly, when I took it out of its wrapper, uh, it was surrounded in quite a slippery, briny uh, substance, which I imagine has come through the, the sort of brining process when it was cured. So not adding any salt, uh, and looking at the wrapper, you know, it did say that there was quite a lot of salt involved in it. So not gonna add any more. A little bit of pepper, a little bit of maple syrup, just that little uh, bit of cider underneath to allow it to cook. And effectively, that is it. We now place on the lid. Put it on slow. You know, on most slow cookers, two settings, high and slow. Depends how much time you've got. 
If you've got the time, obviously place it on slow, let it cook long and slow throughout the day. As a rule of thumb, about 20 to 25 minutes of slow cooking time for every pound of meat that you've got there, ish. Now I'm gonna, you know, this, this is an imprecise science. When you're slow cooking, we're not talking about it, bringing it out at just the right moment. It's not like cooking a steak where you want it to be just that certain color of pink on the inside. Slow cooking, you know, we allow it to, to cook over long periods. If it goes an hour over, does it really matter? It's cooking in liquid, it's not gonna go dry. It's still gonna be fantastic when we get to the end of this cooking journey. So I'm gonna leave that slowly cook. I'm gonna probably leave it in there for six hours. I'm gonna come back after three and have a look at it. I'm gonna put it on slow and just let it do its work. After three hours, you know, I know when I wanna serve the food, if it doesn't look as if it's cooking fast enough or I need to give it a boost, obviously I can turn it up onto high uh, and see it, see it through to its final cooked destination. So that's it, it's as simple as that. We'll come back and have a look at it in about three hours just to see how it's getting on. But for me, now I can walk away and get on with the rest of my preparation for my party tonight. That's why I love slow cooking. Little effort, big return. See you in a bit. Hello, well, welcome back. It's now midday, so just under three hours have passed since we started cooking our gammon ham in the slow cooker. And it's been ticking away, cooking nice. I can just hear it simmering, boiling in there very nicely. Um, I did put it on high for one hour just to get it started because the gammon was a little cold. It had been in the refrigerator overnight and it wasn't exactly room temperature. So for the first hour, I put him on uh, the high setting just to give it that boost. But since then it's been on the low and I just want it to slowly simmer over this next few hours to make sure it's lovely and cooked through. As I say, around about 20 to 25 minutes per pound would be a good time for slow cooking. If you are really keen to know how it's getting on, you can use a thermometer and test the temperature. Our goal would be around about 160 at the center of the meat. Then we know it would be fully cooked through and on, you know, very warm and hot inside. So that's where we want to be. So I'm just going to take the lid off to have a look and I will get around behind the camera and I'll show you that just so you can see where we are at the moment. It's not too glamorous to look at, obviously it's just a ham, but uh, I would say another two to three hours. I'm aiming on getting this ham out about three o'clock, four o'clock in the afternoon, just see how he's getting on and uh, it'll be lovely and just cool down then ready for our guests tonight who I expect will be dining with us at about 7.30, 8 o'clock. So there we are. Is this not an easy way to make dinner? You throw it in the slow cooker, you come back after three hours, you look at it, you come back three hours later, let's eat. It's as simple as that. And everybody will be saying, wow, how do you cook this ham so well tonight? We will not let them in and our little secret, it's the slow cooker that does the work. So, do you wanna have a look? So here's Mr. Ham, looking good, three hours in. Just your little simmer going on there and the ham is cooking away rather nicely. I could just give him a little prod to see how he's feeling. Oh, excuse the noise, just rummaging for something to prod him with. And yeah, oh, he's still, still quite yielding, so still got a bit of cooking to do there yet. As I say, if you want to check the temperature, it should be reading 160 at its core when it's cooked, which would be plenty for, for preparation to be serving to people. But at the moment, still in the first half of the cooking period, keep that lid on uh, another three hours, I reckon, and we will be looking at a fantastic bit of ham. So, see you in about three hours. Well, welcome back to the party kitchen. Everything's going to plan. Most of my preparation is done, but the one thing I haven't had to worry too much about, of course, has been my meat, because that's been quietly in the corner of the room, cooking away, and now is the big reveal. Let's have a look to see if the six and a half hours, which I've allowed it to cook, has been enough, and I'm pretty sure it has. I've only checked it the once, and right now at the moment, it's just sitting there in all its juices. I unplugged it, around about 25, 30 minutes ago, and I've just allowed it to settle down and to, to stand for a moment, just to, to sort of 
continue cooking, but without any added heat coming from the slow cooker. So let's have a look what we have got here. Oh, I can tell that it's really well cooked because the, the, uh, the fork has just slipped right into it. And I think the hardest thing you would be getting it out without it doing a runner. So there we go. Get him out from there. Oh, that is one mighty ham. Right, so I'm just gonna let that settle now for another 20, 30 minutes and allow it to continue cooking, but slowly reduce in temperature so that we will be able to cut it and have a look at it properly. So I will do that. That's the end of our journey though. My ham is now beautifully cooked. I'll add some photographs on at the end just so that you can see what it looked like when it was cut. I don't intend on this occasion to, um, to, to bake it. So quite often what people might do at this stage, they might bake it for just 20, 30 minutes having covered the top in a glaze. A glaze being something like red currant jelly or marmalade if you like, if you like orange flavor on your ham. Um, I don't intend to do that today because it's only gonna be a buffet. People will just take a piece of ham as they want it with the rest of their meal. So there's no need to get too fancy. But uh, you know, these are the options you can still have. But I will add some photos so you can see what it looked like. Thank you for being with me on this journey today as I've prepared this ham for the party which starts in just under two hours. So plenty of time still to sort myself out, get the house looking good, get the music on. And the one thing that hasn't been a problem for me all day has been this wonderful ham, which I'm sure in just a couple of hours, everybody will be tucking into and congratulating me on my culinary excellence. When in reality, my good buddy, the slow cooker here has carried that burden for me today. So very grateful for that. And I have to say, it's the one thing in the kitchen which I couldn't live without when it comes to cooking meat, because it guarantees you a pretty good result every time. So thanks for joining me today. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you again soon at the Chaps Guide. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please like it. Also subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click that little notification bell so you don't miss out on the future content which we will give you to assist you on your Chaps journey. See you soon.